So, to kick back into things, I figured I would do a demonstration video of what it's, what, uh, um, how to, how different underlays actually affect, uh, um, different materials, and how, uh, ultimately, like, for me, I do not take DSTs. I, like, I will take DSTs, and then you gotta pay extra to have it, have it redone, because ultimately, not, uh, um, not every fabric can take, or not not every DST runs the same way on every fabric, and it some just won't run at all. So I f figured we would I would actually do a demonstration using uh, the same exact uh, uh, two lines, two bars. Um, one's a tatami fill, one is a satin fill, and the only difference between ever all of them, like it has the same density, same pull compensation. The only difference between the, these four sets is uh, the diff is different underlay types. Here we got tatami. Here we got double zigzag. Oh, both of these still have edge runs too. J an edge run just up on its own and no underlay at all. With um and it uh so so we're going to actually test it on three different materials one is going to be a twill a poly cotton twill that um mo a lot twills usually run relatively the same eh not really but to uh for the most part um they respond to the files the same way usually ish um a poly cotton which like a K500 or so on and then a 100% polyester uh, uh, um, performance and how these all will affect and run together. So, yep, here, let's get started and show the hooped items. So, here I have the same, the three different items hooped, the same, hooped all of them using standard one point, uh, no, two ounce, two ounce, uh, uh, um, cut away two layers of it. Um, normally I wouldn't actually run, uh, um, a 100% a poly, uh, polyester and even a, a twill with uh, um with this kind of backing because um with poly cotton twill poly cotton twill or even 100% cotton twill the backing will shrink and on a twill that is obvious um with and same with the polyester the polyester I usually use a mesh um or some comb or in both cases different combinations of, of pull away back um tear away uh, uh mesh and regular cutaway but for eliminating variables that can change the end result we're just going to do it all on the same thing so let's get let's load it up and get started here is the uh twill sew out of the of them now let's see this is going to be fun to try to get everything to focus right um, so that I can illustrate some of this. Now, twill is actually one of the mo more forgiving of fabrics in terms of uh, um, putting uh, too few stitches in it. Um, it and it's also the, one of the more forgiving in terms of registration. And, and so, uh, uh, the, so it, it, it's hard to... Um, this pretty much came out identical across the board with only some minor differences that you have to look kind of close for. So, here we started out with um, the, uh, uh, we had a tatami uh, fill with an edge run. Now, I realized I put edge runs on two, two of the four tests, so, or actually three of the four tests, so I, I went ahead and did a second sew out with just the tatami and just the, the d double zigzag, along with a, uh, um, just a, just a regular zigzag. So anyway, here here we got uh, um, uh, uh, the four main sew outs: tatami with an edge run, double zigzag with an edge run, pure edge run, and no underlay whatsoever. Now on this, they pretty much all look pretty good. Uh, you got good. It really doesn't have much um in terms of a. Uh, um, any pattern to it, which can result as uh, um, having too much underlay. Um, let's see, uh, autofocus is not cool. Or auto white balance, whatever. So, but you, if you actually look at the side, you can see a difference in the thickness 
of set of the embroidery, which um, is actually really important when you're trying to do layering or or uh, small text on top of a fill. Because uh, if it's too thick or too um, heavy, you end up either bulletproofing or creating a a hot spot or not a hot spot, but a, um, a dense spot where when it goes over the needle plate and tries to embroider in a single spot, you're going to get registration issues. So um, up here, we got the tatami with the edge run. It's actually got, it's actually probably uh, one of the smoothest and one of the most even, but it is very dense. It is very, not dense, but thick. Uh, um, let's see where you're actually getting let's see, roughly a millimeter, not a millimeter, you, a visible layer between. Over here, we got the double zigzag with edge run. Now, that one, we definitely get this layered effect. And that, and it's so that um, trying to get through that is almost, is you're going to have a lot of issues with registration if you're trying to butt things up or, or lay over it or so on and so forth. Um, here we've got just the pure edge run, which this is pretty much the uh, um, the it's got this one of the smoothest, but it's got a clean edge, and that's what you're looking for with uh, uh, um, with the edge run. Whereas down here, it, it's almost imperceptible on on twill, but you get just a slightly more jagged space where the colors are uh, um, where the not the colors, but the um, Stitching is getting threaded between the um, the threads of the fabric. Now, uh, um, this, but it's still it's still the 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 thinnest of the of the. It's, you still get a bump, but it's nowhere near as significant as this one over here. Uh, so, and then here you get that. You get a little bit, but it's not, it's again, not as bad as over here. And the reason now, these two are pretty much the um, standard go to for, for Twill when it comes to um, creating uh, a smooth but light, uh, um, smooth but light uh, uh, embroidery that you can, you can say outline the edge, edges of this or put, uh, um, or put a, a, a small text on top because with with small smaller texts, you you want to have a structure underneath that is stable. And uh, with it with a twill fill or not a twill a tatami fill, you're able to actually create a structure that small stitches will um, be supported underneath and not sink into fabric. Uh, yeah. So moving on, we've got I've, I did the three other test runs, and once again. Twill kind of runs well with it still. Um, here we got the pure uh, um, tatami. Uh, but as you can see, on the edges, we get that same edge that we, that same sort of un, um, sunken edge that you get on the, uh, the one without any underlay. Same thing down here with the, with the double, with a double. And same thing here with a with a just a straight single zigzag. Um, the one of the major differences that you get, though, is um, one you still get that that dense sort of uh, layering effect where it's it comes it bubbles out just a little bit more. But out on on this one, let's see if I can capture it very well. You. Um, with just a regular zigzag, which they're use, it's useful when you can't when you when you need to create an offset sort of uh, um, underlay under certain things where it's just if you did a running stitch, the stitches are too close together. But anyway, uh, no, eh, yeah, sort of. One of the things that you get when you do just a normal zigzag is um, you you still get a little bit of lofting, not as much as say this this or this. But what you um, because on wider stitches, it's actually um, detrimental because you get this pattern, this sort of like wag, wag, waggly pattern in the center of it. The, like ignore the edges because 
I just it stitched out slightly on an angle. But what, um, what what I mean is like in the, if you actually look at the center, you can see this sort of like this kind of wavy uh, uh, um, reflection of light that and that actually is terrible, especially on camera. Uh, um, so that's the twelve. Um, moving on from there, we've got our poly cotton. Oh, evil. Um, so it with poly cotton normally you want to have you also have to consider that pull compensation and density are are also a factor in all of these things. But uh, um, to illustrate, but for in this case, we're trying to illustrate the the effects of of um, just underlay on the on the fabric. So up here we have again our edge run and uh, um, uh, uh, tatami fill, which is between it's a toss up between the two. Um, what's what's inter nice about um, this on a poly cotton? This is actually um, it actually kind of evens out how much it sinks in with how how much it's lofting it. This actually which becomes useful when you're trying to create a more pronounced uh, um, uh, artwork instead of a flattened one. Because on a polycotton, it kind of sinks in and just looks like you just kind of stamped it in there onto, a, onto the shirt. Um, here we have the pure edge run. And as you can see, it did not You get all this poke through and that... Like you can increase the density, but what happens when you increase the density is that it's going to push even further because it's trying to layer up uh, um, stitches more and more. It's like trying to shove too many uh, uh, cards into a wallet. Um, uh, and down here, it's even worse. Like up here, you can see how how the edge run at least is keeping it lofted above on the edges a bit. But the center is still kind of off. Um, whereas down here, it's just completely uh, sunken in all over. Um, here, same thing. Uh, you still got you still got um, a bit of loft in the center where the um, tatami was running, but because it doesn't have that nice singular edge to to anchor itself to it it just doesn't go anywhere that same down here and, and same down here it's it's pretty much across the board going to do that now we come to the most complicated and and hard to manage uh, for for many people um is the polyester ah. so this one's actually i i got i gotta move the camera for this one so they all kind of look generally okay, but that's also that's partially because of um, the red background is not contrasting well enough on camera. But there we go. That's a good lighting. Um, um, so up here, it looks pretty good as a sew out, except you're getting this puckering over here that because it ran all across this way. Both with the underlay and with the top stitching, um, down here you, it's hard to see. There is still puckering, but um, because it ran this way, what actually is happening? If we can get the we can get there close enough, you can sort of see in the pattern of the fabric it is puckered. But because you've got this up here and this down here anchoring some of it, it's sort of flattening it together and just creating this textured pucker that you can only tell via the texture, whereas it, the rest of it's just kind of anchored down. After the first washing of, of but as a note, after the first washing of uh, of the cutaway, this, it, it will actually significantly pronounce as the cutaway will sort of either shrink or become less, less structured. It'll pucker together. Um, the edge run is actually the best one on this one. Um, you, you now, at least for the satin, like with with this, you get a lot of puckering and a lot of density, which on on a on a um, performance that's that that will actually become 
heavy and, and pull stuff on its own without even just puckering. Same thing up here. Down here, this is just enough. The only problem with this one is that with a tatami fill, you get uh, um, you just get this gap let's see, where you can see red in the center of it. So with this, you probably you could do a center run or a or a thinner, lighter tatami. Like actual fill stitching, solving for fill stitch on um, with a on a polyester is actually a lot harder than the satin. But um, it, it, there's a lot of other factors in that. But anyway, and then we come down to the the un uh, the the one without any underlay whatsoever. So we're getting a lot of the same problem that we did on some of the others, except at this time, at this point, we actually get a little bit more um, show through inter or not a little bit more, but uh, a little bit more sunken in on the fill. Let's see where. The center of it is almost as sunken in it as as the edges. Um, never do an un an uh, un uh, uh, underlaid thing on on polyester. It just doesn't work. Um, it also is actually one one of the most um, uh, puckered out of all of them. Let's see. Let's get this. Done. Let's move the camera so I can get as best a view. For the puckering. So here we have the final, uh, um, a better close-up. Uh, camera cut out. Whoopsies. But um, here we have a close, uh, a side view, so we can sort of see the different puckering that's going on here. Um, let's focus. There we go. So up here, um, it's it's because it runs this way. It puckers all the way over here in the end. It's also got a little bit of a pull th this way. This one, um, even though it's um, hard to see, I showed it early in the video, but uh, um, because it the en the, en the total pucker ends up right here, it gets hidden by the fact that these two sew down before and after it, so it stretches the fabric out that way um, by just enough to make it almost hard, almost impossible to see. Down here, we've got, um, this This is honestly the best one. The only problem is, if I can get a visual of it, if you, you can sort of see how that there's still a little bit of show of that red. Um, on, a, on a line this size with a fill, you could use actually use a, a, a uh, running stitch to get that final result, but um, to come out a little bit better. But ultimately, there's just not a whole lot. You just gotta find the happy point for that. Um, and down here, there's just all kinds of puckering going on because it is a, because in un, unlike um, on these where you're trying to get a lot of you're trying to use as few stitches to get the densest re looking result. Here you're. Um, the more important thing that you're do that the underlay is doing here is to at least to loft it a little bit, but anchor it to the fabric so that um so that you don't ha so that the um top stitch where it's just repetitive push pull back and forth motions w is going to cause lots of puckering and registration and pull that's going to just bunch the fabric up. Whereas the, whereas the underlay is actually anchoring it to the backing, allowing it to sort of take most of the uh, most of the um, tension. Um, I again, I did the other three, and uh, you get a similar result uh, to the others. But uh, um, what's interesting is that the puckering on this one is significantly less than it was up here uh and it's using the, pretty much the same result the only problem is you still get that edge like this now um those edges and in those instances where you get stuff like this um on all this and all the fabrics that's not always a bad thing because when you're actually doing um when you're actually creating creating the files to begin with for other stuff Say you wanted to outline you wanted to outline the um, 
the the fills or or whatnot with uh, uh with a satin you need to you actually want to have this this sort of like un un this un uh, uh lofted edge that allows it some a space to sort of sink between the fabric and create a much smoother edge over on this on on the side that's actually butting up against stuff same same thing here here and here ultimately all of these have are important in different locations of a file but when you're talking about the raw edges of a thought of of satin or 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 a fill stitch it is it's really important that you have the proper uh, um underlay and the in in the proper build up underneath everything both for anchoring purposes and for uh, um satin or uh, anchoring and lofting purposes um but what what I'm hoping that the, this illustrates is that not all files can run the same on all materials. Um, it just it it bugs me to no end when people just say, "Oh, just give me the DST," and it's like, "Nope, that don't work." Um, yeah, it it what's really um, annoying is if you have something that's going to run really good on this. It will absolutely pucker this to no end. If you have something that's going to run really, really nice on this, um, it's smooth, it's flat, it's it's got just the right amount of anchoring, but not not too much. It's gonna it's gonna look awful on this and this. So yeah, fun, good to know. <laughs>